and today I'm going to be playing Johnny Chemistry. Now, there are different ways of degreasing bows prior to sinew backing or um, rawhide backing. If you didn't use grease in the bending process of your bow, if you didn't bend it, um, then you can just use like scrubbing it with dish soap or a detergent and water or um, using some kind of solvent. However, if you use grease in the shaping of your bow, you may need to use something stronger. And so I'm going to show you how to use um, lye, uh, a lye solution, to actually sulfify um, the grease. If you take lye and grease, you create soap. That's how lye soap is made, in a nutshell. Now you can make lye soap. Not. This was a really good bow. This is the one, the, the self bow, that I um, demonstrated yesterday in my video. But I'm going to take this good bow and make a great bow by sinew bagging. Of course, before I was shooting it and demonstrating it yesterday, I greased the heck out of it, held it over heat source and rubbed grease into it, which is not good for sinew bagging. So I need to actually not degrease it, but ungrease it by changing the grease that I put into it um, into soap. And the best way to do that is with a lye solution. I have latex gloves, rubber longer gloves would be better, but I don't have any, and eye protection, because this stuff is dangerous. I need to really stress that. Um, sulfuric acid is dangerous. It's an acid. This stuff is on the other side it's totally alkaline, and um, uh, caustic chemicals such as this, get back cat, this is too dangerous, uh, can be just as dangerous as acid. So I would definitely, this is my disclaimer, if you're under 18, don't do it. Um, maybe you can have parental supervision or somebody older, but you need to be careful with this stuff. Get it in your eyes, it'll make a really bad day if it doesn't blind you all together long sleeve shirt, um, goggles, not just glasses because you don't want to get any splash back, gloves definitely because if you get some on your finger and rub your eyes, a really bad day. Again, this is hazardous, very hazardous, but it works well. I'm going to be working in my sink um, using glass containers and stainless steel spoon to stir it. And cat, you don't have your goggles on. And a scale. It's important that you measure everything as precisely as possible. I would also suggest using um, distilled water because if you have well water, city water that has impurities in it, it can affect um, how the lye solution um, forms. I'm not a chemist. I'm not a chemist. So, if there's anybody out there that has suggestions as far as ratios, and you are a chemist or experienced with making a lye soap, by all means comment. I'm not going to be using like the strongest possible solution. When I made lye soap in the past, I used a stronger lye solution. So I'm going to back it up a little bit, um, safety wise. I'm not going to start to running water while I wash your bowl, but here we go. My ratio is a quart of water to one ounce of Red Devil Lye. So, first step is this has a uh, measuring things on here. Cold water, cold water, not hot water because you're going to have an exothermic reaction. It's going to heat up. Now I have my scale and my plastic cup. Zero it. One ounce. Starting to register. It's not as strong of a solution as you can get, but it's still strong enough to hurt if you get it in yourself. Get the 
light crystals on here and the cat hops on there, it's not good. Don't want to hurt the kitty. There we go, one ounce. Into the sink. Into the sink. If things go awry and that container cracks, you don't want it all over your floor. Stainless steel sink. Place this in the sink. Safety first, gang. And stir it. demonstration purposes. I'm going to place this here so you can see it. It's a ball jar, so chances are if it gets hot it's not going to break. And what you need to do is just let it sit a bit. Because you want the reaction to start. It will clear up. It's starting to clear up and it will get hot. And while I'm doing this, I can tell you the world's perfect joke. These two stupid cowboys were walking through an old west town. And they happened to walk through the streets and they came upon a blacksmith shop. And so they walked into the blacksmith shop and they saw the smithy hammering out horseshoes, tossing them red hot into the corner. Well, one of the cowboys, stupid cowboys, walked over there, grabbed one of the horseshoes he had finished making, looked at it, and then threw it away really quickly. And the smithy was like, hey, what happened, son? Did you hurt yourself on that hot horseshoe? And the stupid cowboy replied, No, sir, don't take long to look at a horseshoe. Best joke in the world. Okay, it's starting to clear up. Cap, my red double eye. Place it in a safe location. Undisclosed. Up. Actually, I can't really feel these gloves. It would also help to have a big old jug of vinegar handy. If you, if you spill it, you can throw an acid on there to help neutralize it. If you get it on your skin and it starts burning, pour vinegar on your hand. completing its process, but it's good enough. So here's what I'm going to do. Half the bow at a time, and then I'm going to rinse it under the sink. I'm going to have this thing running the whole time. Paper towel's handy to damp it off, so then I can rinse it, wipe it, and then do the other one. I'm not worried so much about getting it completely degreased on the belly, although it'll run across there. Um, because I'm not going to put Sinew on the belly. Here we go. Water running. Solution. Goggles. Always wear goggles. If you don't have any, buy some. Uh, oops. Hopefully that's just water. Here we go. Carefully. soak in. This should be enough for both sides. As soon as you put it on, especially the old size orange, you should see the, the bone discoloring and actually the yellow color washing off. surface dry it. The last thing you want to do, look at that brown coming off in your wood, is get this stuff. On your countertops where you can just touch the solution, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up and wash the countertops with vinegar. Again, vinegar is an acid and it will neutralize 
the alpha lens. going to let it work. Again, it's not as scientific as making salt, because different process, need different results. But this will be a good, very good first step in degreasing your ball. Okay, in the interest of time, because I have gloves on, this is fine. Not penetrating gloves. Switch it around there. And rinse. Rinse it really good. And don't worry about getting water in the boat. When you see you back, it has to appear for a month and a half or so. So any water that you get on the limbs will evaporate. so it won't be completely dangerous. There we go. Take it off so I don't drip it on the counter. Rinse the other one. in your back. I am going to wash it with the detergent and water. But because I went through and I, I grease my bows more than once, grease them, let them cool and it stop soak in, and grease them again, gradually developing a bend. It's all part of the breaking in process. Then I grease them again, making sure the grease penetrates. I had no choice but to use lye in order to sinew back the same. The secret of sinew backing and rawhide backing is preparation of your surfaces. You can do the best possible job you can in mixing your glue and laying it down, but if you haven't actually, I'm going to get some soap, sized the bowl and prepared it for backing, all your good work is for not that's just it. Why not? There's also citrus degreasers you can use as you do this. This breaks down the surface tension, of course, and allows the washing effect to reach deeper into the lens than just standard water. And I know this hurts to watch it. You cured your bowl, you're safe. And now you're just like washing the heck out of it. But again, see you back in. Cures for a long enough time, so this water that I'm introducing to the bow, which isn't going to soak into the core, its surface, it will not affect it. start working.
Hopefully the soap also soaked in there. Don't deactivate, deactivate that live. And again, just so you don't have to go back and watch it all over again. My ratio was one ounce of red double light to a quart of cold water. Preferably distilled so you don't have any other compounds in your water. Our well water is great. If you visited here and drank our water, you'd never want to leave. There we go. We have safety gloves. Take this off because soapy water's not going to blind me. It's on the counter. It's all right, soapy water. Dry it off quickly or else the world will stop turning. The Illuminati will get us. Ooh. You can actually see if it was affected by the color change in the wood. It will change the color. And there we go. I'll put this under a fan so it can dry thoroughly. No grease on there. And again, I'm going to take a good bow and make a great bow. Aha! Sinew backers out there, you notice that I have this really distinct um, edge right here where it changes width. Now, the sinew you put it on, you might run into a little bit of problem of making that sharp bend in it. It's nothing major, just a thought. If you have the sinew going down the edge about an eighth inch or a quarter of an inch, and then rounding here, this will pull up. And so I'm going to have the edge run along the bow, and then it's going to come up here so it's more of a straight line, so when it shrinks, the straight line pull. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to have sinew wraps over here that would hide the difference in overlap on that edge. Again, it'll overlap, and then come up here, be kind of bare on that thing right there, that protuberance, but the sinew wraps will cover it up, and so you won't notice. It'll look like a perfectly great edge, even even. The wraps will hide that little odd thing right there. And there we go. When it dries out, I'll take a fine tooth saw, a, a back saw or miter saw, and run it lengthwise to get little grooves, and it acts somewhat like how... Um, North or, or Korean bows had their wooden surfaces matched with the horns where there was actually like um, little triangular cuts in there. You get more surface area and it also allows the glue to soak in better by just scratching it. Don't worry about compromising the back. First of all, you're doing it in a straight line from tip to tip, which is good. And second of all, the sinew is going to take the brunt of the tensional load, not that wood. This wood is going to start going towards the neutral plane. So any issues you have with scratching up the back for senior back, and especially with Osage Orange, uh, which is, you know, delamination is an issue if you don't prepare it right. Any issues you have with scratching it up disappear. Senior will fix it. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And again, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Gloves, eye protection, sink, running water, vinegar handy. I've done this so much. I've done it so much, so I'm not really too scared of it anymore. I don't get, like, glass all over. <sighs> the end.